on Friday morning. The May canola contract is down 70 cents at 462.10 per ton. The July contract is down 50 cents at 471.10 per ton. Malaysian palm oil, European rapeseed, and soy oil on the Chicago Board of Trade all started the day slightly higher. Even though the Canadian and U.S. governments are passing aid packages, concerns of COVID-19's impact on the global economy still linger. Weakness in the Canadian dollar provided some support to canola values. The Canadian dollar was around 70 U.S. cents on Friday morning, which is about a quarter of a cent lower than the previous day. However, the loonie has gained strength in comparison to earlier in the week. The soy complex on the Chicago Board of Trade was mixed on Friday. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Argentina has slowed vessel transit, including soybean shipments. That has provided support to Chicago soy. Ahead of the USDA's prospective planting report next week, a private survey has pegged soybean acreage to be between 82.7 and 87.1 million acres. This compares to last year's acreage, which was 76.1 million. The May contract is down 3 cents at 8.77 per bushel. May soy oil is down by a fraction of a cent at 26.46 U.S. cents per pound. And May soy meal is down 60 cents at $322 per hundredweight. Corn futures were lower on Friday. Market participants expect planted corn acreage to be between 92.5 and 96.4 million acres. Last week, corn export sales totaled over 1.8 million tons. That's a marketing year high and also 81% higher than the prior four-week average. However, lower demand for ethanol and gas has kept pressure on prices. The May contract is down 2.5 cents at 3.46 per bushel. Wheat futures were stronger on Friday due to consistently strong global demand. Last week, net sales for wheat totaled 740,000 tons. That's 73% higher than the prior four-week average. Kansas City May wheat is up 9 cents at 4.96 per bushel. Chicago May is up 13 and a half cents at 5.82 per bushel, and Minneapolis spring wheat is up 6 cents at 5.37 per bushel. That's a look at the ice futures and Chicago markets for Friday morning, March 27th. For Markets Farm in Winnipeg, I'm Marlo Glass. Proving you can't get too much of a good thing. There are no shortcuts to success. That's why New Holland engineered T6 series tractors to outperform competitive tractors in every way so you can achieve higher productivity with less effort. More powerful engines, faster response from tier 4B engines delivering 145 to 175 max boosted horsepower. Smooth speeds to match your applications. Choose one of three easy to use transmissions. Better visibility, unsurpassed view from the horizon cab. More comfort and ease, quiet smooth ride with Comfort Ride Cab Suspension. Stop by Butler Farm Equipment in Fort St. John today to check out the T6 Series tractor from New Holland. The opinions expressed during this show do not represent those of this station. If you've missed any of this show, you can follow the podcast at energeticcity.ca. Now, an in-depth look at the news and information shaping our community. This is Moose Talks with your host, Doug Craig on Moose FM. Good morning and welcome to Moose Talks. I'm live in the Moose FM studio for just this show once a week today. Uh, later on, we're going to be joined by Faye Anstey of Northern Red Fitness. Uh, she's been doing some videos on her Northern Red uh, Facebook and other social media pages all about some exercises you can do while you're at home, social distancing. But we're going to start today with the mayor of Fort St. John, Lori Ackerman, who joins me now via video chat. How's it going today, Mrs. Mayor? Fabulous. Excellent. Thank you so much for taking some time out to uh, join us uh, via this uh, video chat here. Uh, you just uh, returned from a vacation with your husband, so you've been self-isolating for the past week or so. Uh, what's that been like for you so far? It's been entertaining. It's been actually quite cool that we can both work from home. I'm not sure if we would all the time. I've actually uh, started to some notes of our experience. I'm calling it 14 days with two type A's. <laughs> yeah, a little, little bit of a grinding of the gears going on, I guess, for each other, hey? <laughs> well, you know, it's... Uh, you're, you're at home, you can't leave. Uh, we're fortunate that we have a support system here that uh, uh, makes sure that uh, you know, the, the groceries have, uh, have, have been delivered. But um, 
in all honesty, it's not easy. And that's a lot of what drove the uh, conversation around ensuring that people who are not uh, residents of Fort St. John, they need to be at home with their loved ones and mm-hmm. their support system if they have to self-isolate. Okay. Now, uh, speaking of that, uh, I wanted to talk a bit about the a local state of emergency that was declared recently, but then it was suspended when the province declared yesterday, as I understand it. Uh, so much happening so quickly. W- what does that mean exactly? First, you discla- uh, the city declared the state of emergency, then the province took over. W- what does that mean for what you are empowered to do uh, with council and 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 does does it mean you can't do anything now that the province has kind of overtaken it right so the way it works is um the province can declare a a low state of or a state of emergency and they've done that in the past Mm -hmm. with forest fires as we know what i did um i combed through all of their orders and i put them down into a table chronologically, went through those, looked at the nine powers that are available to local government and discovered that there was three of them that they had not spoken to. Mm -hmm. And those three were the um, ensuring that uh, there's no uh, product hoarding or price gouging. That was one. The other one was to be able to take those who were able and willing to uh, do other things tasks, other jobs, could be moved to that. And the example that they gave uh, was uh, if you're delivering parts or furniture now, we're going to have you delivering groceries to the vulnerable population and uh, or to remote communities like our First Nations neighbours. Mm-hmm. That was the second one. The third one was about the movement of people. And that's where uh, self-isolation and understanding that, you know, we're in our house. These people are in a camp room if at all possible, they should be able to go home. Um, Knowing, and I had conversations with the MBC, Emergency Management BC, sorry. Um, I explained to them that we were going to look at this state of local emergency for those, knowing full well that it could take them 24 hours, it could take them a week to then put those in place provincially. At that time, when they did that, we would step down. When we announced that to the public on uh, Tuesday after the special meeting, we are required by law to put out a map of the area. So we got some people a little excited that this was Fort St. John, we were shutting it down. Mm. No, (laughs) we weren't shutting it down. But as you remember a few years ago when we had the forest fires, because our boundary is so jagged, uh, the regional district put in um, um, alerts uh, up to our boundary, which really did come into, um, or what looked like it was coming into Fort St. John, and it doesn't. It's just outlining the jurisdiction that you have authority for. I see. Uh, so you kind of mentioned this, kind of the powers that it gave council. because So because the province has done their own state of emergency, then you don't have those powers mm-hmm. anymore, or are you empowered by the province to do those things? Yeah. No, we no longer have that ability. And that's what actually is concerning some of my colleagues. Mm-hmm. Uh, we at the, to the provincial government have acted our emergency plan to enforce their um, emergency declaration. Mm-hmm. And so that, what, that came out yesterday. And so our staff um, have, um, They've activated an emergency operations center, which we know is an EOC. That EOC will begin working on how our municipality can facilitate uh, those orders by the provincial government. Okay, I see. Uh, what does this mean for, uh, for example, like future council meetings and services that the city uh, normally provides going forward? And Related, do you have a plan for if things kind of get worse before they get better with how to deal with things? I I guess that's sort of what this emergency management is supposed to do is kind of put things in place to make it so that you can move forward, correct? Right. So uh, what we have been doing over the past uh, week to 10 days is really starting to work on moving our staff home Mm -hmm. and uh, getting them working from home. And so we've had to put in place those work plans, make sure that their their new workplace is safe, et cetera. All of that stuff has to be done. 
we have been able to manage a good portion of uh, the services uh, to go online. Mm -hmm. We've always had and will continue to have that report a problem online, both on our app as well as on our website. Um, Council has chosen to announce that we will have meetings every week because we still speak through resolution. And so the only way that Council can uh, make decisions is through a meeting. So we've decided that uh, every week that we do not have a meeting, a meeting planned, we will uh, um, have one we, and move things forward as, as quickly as we possibly can. If there's an issue that we are seeing that is unique to our region that we need the province to pay attention to, uh, we are now required to reach out to them to talk to them about that. I can also tell you that uh, business continuity is very much on our mind mm -hmm. and how we manage that. And actually that is something that has been in, uh, in play for years. A lot of businesses have taken the time to create business continuity plans for, uh, for their businesses. And so uh, there's information online through Emergency Management BC. Uh, if, uh, if any businesses are struggling to find that, they're more than welcome to, uh, to reach out to me. My home phone number is on my business card. Uh, my cell number is as well. Um, they can email me if they want to. Um, I will get them that information. They can start working on it if they want to or take a look at it. Um, this, the resources are out there, and I know that the BC Business Council has really pulled together a lot of business associations to talk about how businesses move forward. But the devil's in the detail, and we haven't got a lot of the detail of the province or the feds. And so we wait right along with the community and just encourage you to uh, stay calm, be kind, and wash your hands. Now, one, social distancing absolutely uh, one last note on the meetings themselves uh, you know people have been seeing and talking a lot about the federal government uh, they've sent a certain number of MPs to go debate the major bill that was passed the the uh, the bill that would uh, allow a lot of this funding to get out to help people with EI and whatnot um, same on the pro the uh, provincial level uh, they're sending a certain number of MLAs to debate so that they have enough, but they still are trying to encourage, you know, obviously a gathering no more than 50. Um, you can't issue resolutions without being together in a room, right? You can't meet remotely and accomplish the same thing, as I understand. Is that correct? So that has changed. Oh, okay. The Minister of, uh, yeah, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing has uh, indicated that uh, local government will be allowed to meet electronically and uh, as you've seen over the last uh, couple of meetings the um, acting mayor has been in the chair mm -hmm. and two other members of council have been there simply the way our chamber is set up we're we we are able to have uh, three members of council there and then four have been on the phone so we're able now to have electronic uh, meetings and that's why yesterday's regional district meeting a lot were on um, the call mm -hmm. and um, we are now also able to pass a bylaw once normally a bylaw would take uh, two I see. Okay. Uh, I want to switch to Site C if I could for a minute too. Uh, there's been a lot of concern about it and, uh, you know, the many employees that are still working there uh, and how it could be affecting the spread of COVID-19 into town and, you know, perhaps being a drain on our medical resources. Um, what have you, you guys have obviously discussed it. There's been some news stories about it. Uh, what do you think? I mean, are you in favor of them shutting down Site C while this is happening because of the, uh, the effect it could have on town and the medical resources here? So I think that over the last several years of this project um, in the in the works, etc., and actually four different governments, two at the provincial level and two at the federal level that have approved this, um, I could talk till the cows come home mm -hmm. <laughs> on this project. <laughs> um, my concern is the transmission of that virus. Mm -hmm. And in this particular emergency situation, it is the Nor Northern Health and the public health officer uh, provincially who make those decisions. Mm -hmm. And so they have 
uh, with the um, the proponent of that project worked out the protocols that we're not privy to um, that dictate how that will be managed. So um, having said that, yesterday alone, I got five different e emails, um, uh, private messages on Facebook, text messages, uh, concerned about some of the activities uh, going on down there. And so I sent a note to BC Hydro saying, you know, what I'm hearing is it's kind of a do as we say, not as we, uh, not as we do kind of environment and that needs to change. And so uh, they thanked me for that and said that they would follow up on that. So I'm staying on top of it mm -hmm. as much as I possibly can. Again, local government is not the decision maker in this picture. Okay. Well, I mean, if uh, got to do mm -hmm. what you can do in that regard. Uh, okay. Lastly, uh, yeah. What do you want to say to the citizens of Fort St. John? I mean, with everything going on, there's lots of anxiety. Mm. Uh, we've seen it with, you know, store shelves still seem to be empty of toilet paper and, and these sort of things a lot. Uh, is there anything you want to say to people who are going through uh, something right now about, you know, just how how we can best be dealing with everything? Sure. And I, I honestly think that, um, and this is sometimes a really conscious decision that people have to take, and that is to really take the fear of this and set it aside and look at what you can be grateful for. Mm -hmm. So you may have, uh, you know, your family, your children, your loved ones, you may have uh, a circle of friends that you can um, create uh, support through. Uh, you need to at least have one person in your circle that understands the uh, the orders that are out. That understands the importance of um, hygiene and of social distancing. You need to um, understand, um, and you know you can make a game of teaching your children how to do uh, proper hand washing. I, my hands are like sandpaper. Um, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a food safe instructor, right? And for any of you out there that I've trained on food safe or anyone who's taken food safe training, you will know that there is a chapter that talks about personal hygiene. And um, while we don't completely understand the transmission of this virus, your personal hygiene um, and how you manage that should not change at any time. And I think that Fort St. John has been um, proactive as a community uh, looking at our social fabric. And we've done this really because of the economy. You know, whether there's an upswing in the economy or a downturn in the economy, uh, our social fabric is absolutely vital. And that's why we've been working for the last few years with the uh, Community Development Institute at UNBC to create that social policy framework and um, we're actually expecting um, that to come to us in the next probably six months. I wish I had it right now, but the timing is, it can't be helped. And it would really help us to understand how, um, you know, we can reach out to our vulnerable uh, population, how we can alleviate, um, you know, those that might be falling through the cracks, how we can manage some of that stuff. But I truly think that we need to practice calm. We need to understand that uh, fear does not belong in our, in our society, that we need to uh, be brave, follow those very thoughtful orders that have been put in place by Dr. Bonnie Henry, and to um, really make sure that you are healthy and that your um, system is fine. And if that means that you self-isolate, uh, then you self-isolate. All right. We're going to have to leave it there, uh, Mrs. Mayor. Thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, I hope the uh, rest Thanks, of your Bob. isolation goes as well as it has been so far. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back on Moose Talks. <laughs> Listen to over 500 radio stations from anywhere in Canada with Radio Player Canada, the must-have app that's as Canadian as you are. Funny, well-informed, dominating the music scene at the gym or in the car. 
Enjoy every type of radio station anywhere, anytime. Listen through your phone, Sonos, Google Chromecast, Google Home, Amazon Echo, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. Download the Radio Player Canada app today. It's where Canadian radio plays. Tonight is truly a magical night. Tonight is any night. It only happens 365 nights a year. Celebrate any night with the Any Night Combo from Panago. Any large recipe pizza plus 10 fire-grilled wings, all for just $27. Remember, after tonight is gone, it's gone until tomorrow. So visit Panago.com and make tonight a very special Any Night. When you're feeling thirsty, you be the thirsty. So come have a drink with us. Call for a party or private events with friends or family well spent. When the chips are up, we'll fill your cup at the Tipsy Tumbleweed Tavern. Visit Rachel, your mobile bartender, at tipsytumbleweedtavern.com. The Government of Canada and public health experts are taking action to protect Canadians from COVID-19. Protect yourself and others, especially those with medical conditions and older adults. Wash your hands often. Avoid touching your face. Cough or sneeze into your arm and disinfect surfaces. You should also avoid crowded places. Avoid all non-essential travel outside of Canada. And if you're sick, stay home. To learn more, visit canada.ca slash coronavirus. A message from the Government of Canada. When it comes to iPhones, most people think you can't replace a battery, but Micro Consulting can. If you need a new battery, see the crew at Micro Consulting because battery life is important. It's how you stay connected, take care of business, and keep in touch with the ladies. See, they just don't stop calling. Hello there. Oh, hi, Mom. Also, remember to update your contacts. For new batteries, screen replacements, parts and more, see Micro Consulting Sales and Service. Keeping you connected on 100th Street and on Facebook. Coffee drinkers know having a hot cup of coffee isn't just a winter thing. It's a year-round thing. So stock up at all your favorites this spring at Peace Country Delight Coffee. Stop in today and see the selection of new delicious coffees and syrups. Plus, new K-Cups from Tim Hortons and Folgers. Need a basket done up for a special occasion? Peace Country Delight is on it. Get your order in today. Peace Country Delight Coffee on 100th Avenue, Facebook, and at peacecoffee.ca. Watch this show live on Facebook or download the podcast at energeticcity.ca. Welcome back to Moose Talks. I'm Dub Craig. We're, jo uh, we're now joined by Faye Anstey with Northern Red Fitness. She's going to talk to us a bit about some great workouts you could be doing while you're uh, in, in and around your house, socially distancing from everybody. How's it going today, Faye? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for doing this uh, with us today. So most of the talk around self-distancing has revolved around what we can be doing in our free time since the places we normally visit, including the gym, are uh, closed. Why don't you tell us a bit about what you've been doing on your Northern Red uh, social media feeds lately? Sure. Um, well, this time, obviously, I'm normally at the gym 12, 14 hours a day, so... I've had a lot of free time on my hands, which I am super not used to. Uh, so I've been uh, filming and sharing and live streaming um, yoga, body weight, workouts we could be doing, um, single exercises that you can do with or without weights, uh, just to help kind of share and give ideas uh, to the community, give you something uh, to do, to kind of keep your, your body healthy, your mind healthy. And yeah, that's about what I've been doing, sharing online, um, there's, you can see a lot of it happening right now. I feel like everybody is posting their workouts online, um, <laughs> which is great. And there's a lot of information being put out there. Um, and so I'm trying just to uh, channel my clients, my, my friends, my followers in a direction that I feel is safe and healthy for everyone, which is kind of key when you're watching all those videos online because you never know who really knows what they're doing. Um, so it's always good to be safe that way too. Absolutely. 
Uh, so what are some of the ex exercises you can do? Because, you know, normally, and now I'll admit, I don't go to the gym a lot, but normally, you know, you could be at the gym, you could lift weights, you'd be on the treadmill. There's all these kind of machines designed for convenience to kind of maximize uh, the movements and whatnot to kind of build muscle and, uh, and what have you. Uh, what what are some examples of, uh, of these exercises that you've been talking about? Uh, and please feel free to demonstrate. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll do what I can for you, Warren. Um, so there's a lot you can do. It uh, doesn't necessarily have to be um, with weights. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of research showing um, training time under tension. Uh, so TUT, you may find it when you're researching online, is actually a great practice um, that I feel like most people should be implementing right now um, and what that is is just really slowing down the exercises you're doing and focusing on the actual muscle contraction because we don't have necessarily you know the 45 pound dumbbells that we might be using at the gym or even 10 pounds right so using lighter weight soup cans wine bottles um, <laughs> things like that um, and then getting into um, squats or um, like tons of stuff, so it's kind of hard to see. Oh, it's funny being on the radio and showing me technology is crazy. Um, I don't even know if you can get a full view of me, but um, even just doing like say front raises up and holding soup cans up in front um, and just trying to draw the shoulders back and down, engaging through the shoulders there. You can do lateral raises the same way, hold it up, really squeeze, think about those shoulders and come back down. Um, squats are something you can do. Um, lots of core planks are probably one of the most effective exercises if I had to choose one. Um, and that can start on the knees. Hopefully by the time you're done this self-isolation, you can do five, six minute planks. Um, <laughs> but just building up from there. Um, and there's, I mean, there's an endless possibility of what you can be doing at home. You just gotta get creative. And whether that be body weight with bands, I know pretty much every store in BC right now that sells fitness equipment is sold out, um, which is great for the health and fitness industry in a way. Um, but also, um, you know, if you're looking for that kind of stuff, you're going to be waiting a while. So, um, yeah, lots of different things you can use. You don't need dumbbells per se. Um, you know, grab your kid, put them on your back, and do squats that way if that's a safe way for you to be using. Um, grab a flat of beer. Do bicep curls with that. Because <laughs> um, if, you, uh, if you've got questions, you can, you know, send me a few screenshots of what you got at home, and I will tell you what, what you can be doing, uh, what you got at home, Lauren. Perfect. Uh, now, this this is going to seem like a silly question, but I mean, obviously, uh, exercising is important for gains and for staying in shape, but it's really important for your mental health and uh, generally really important for your mental health, especially at a time like this. Why? Why is it so important in your opinion? Okay, well, that's not a silly question at all. Um, it's super important, even if... Um, you know, we're not going through what we're doing, what we are right now and self-isolating. Um, I myself, I, I have my cat and my dog and that's basically who I live with. Um, mentally, it's hard for me. I'm used to talking to everyone. Um, I mean, you can attest to that. Adam can attest to that. I usually don't stop talking. So mentally, this has been uh, pretty hard for me, which is why I probably haven't been quiet this entire interview. <laughs> um, I just, that mental stimulation that you need is um, is lacking right now, right? So getting your body moving, popping those endorphins, uh, challenging yourself uh, physically helps release some of that stress that we feel um, in the day to day. And even just getting up and moving your body, whether it be just, you know, safely walking around the block or, um, you know, doing a few jumping jacks, any kind of movement there just to get your body flowing, like your, your blood pumping, your muscles moving, pumping through those endorphins, trying to just relax the body a bit is super, super important.
Okay. Now, again, we'd mentioned that yeah. you've been putting the uh, videos on your uh, uh, social media pages. Uh, Northern Red Fitness is the name of your company. Uh, where can we get more right. information about things like this? You know, your Facebook page, obviously, but is there some good resources you can suggest for more exercises uh, we can do around our homes? Um, well, personally, I have, um, I have a website, Northern Red Fitness. Uh, dot com and that has links to my Instagram, my Facebook, and my YouTube. Um, there are quite a few videos up on my personal YouTube. I know that a lot of the gyms and a lot of the yoga studios as well in town, um, Cornerstone, Soul Space, Prevail Athletics, are all um, trying to do as many live feed classes. And then those classes actually stay on their page as well, just as mine do. Um, so those can be really good resources. Um, I may not be the face that you want to see when you're exercising. You may not like the sound of my voice. So there are lots of other uh, very qualified instructors in town that may suit your needs a little bit better. Um, and those are some local places that you can go to for that as well. All right, Faye. Well, I'm really appreciative that you took a few minutes to talk to us this morning about this important thing that's good, as uh, I said, for your physical and your mental health. Thanks so much for doing this, Faye. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll be right back to wrap things up right here on Moose Talks. Fort St. John, are you ready for authentic Vietnamese cuisine? Due to the safety of the community and staff at Pha A Pha Authentic Cuisine, they have closed their dining room to the public, but will offer pickup or free delivery to you at your home or at your business. Pha A Pha Saigon Authentic Vietnamese Cuisine offer free pickup or delivery seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Call today, 250-785-3003, pickup or free delivery. Pha A Pha Saigon Authentic Vietnamese Cuisine apologizes for any inconvenience this coronavirus has caused. Please be safe. Save on Foods is offering special shopping hours to better serve their customers. From 7 a.m. until 8 a.m., their doors are open for seniors and those most vulnerable. Save on Foods, going the extra mile. Being in the industry themselves, Highmark Oil Field is obviously a proud supporter of the oil and gas industries. They have over 30 years experience and specialize in plant maintenance, pipelines, and turnarounds. To learn more, visit highmarkoilfield.ca. A proud supporter of the oil and gas industries. If you're looking for hassle-free internet services, call the Peace Region Internet Society today. With coverage throughout most of the Peace, PRIS can get you connected quickly without the hassle of contracts or bundles. Visit PRIS.ca or call 1-800-768-3311 for more information. Our community first. This is Moose Talks with Dub Craig on Moose FM. Our thanks again to Lori Mac uh, Ackerman, pardon me, the mayor of Fort St. John, for joining us. Everything we talked about today, she said uh, more information available on the city's website, including what services and how to access them uh, at fortstjohn.ca. As well, Faye and Steve, thank you very much for joining us today. She is with Northern Red Fitness. You can find her on Facebook under Northern Red Fitness and see all the great videos she's been putting up about all the exercises you can do around your home. Make sure you stay tuned to energeticcity.ca for all your information on COVID-19 around town and around the province and the country. Uh, but if I were you, maybe limit yourself to 30-ish minutes a day of reading that get overwhelmed really easily there's so many uh, so much information coming in uh, at any given time uh, you'll be able to stay on top of it you don't need to check it constantly but uh, thank you nonetheless for reading that all right we'll be back next time on moose talks our thanks to adam rayburn for producing this along with tracy teves i'm dub craig have a good one Join us next Friday at 10 a.m. for another episode of Moose Talks, a weekly talk show about Fort St. John and the North Peace. Energetic country. Energetic country. 100.1 Moose FM.